All right, so time for round two. Uh, this is going to be the homework questions from lesson 10.1 for third grade. So again, we've been working with um, telling time using an analog clock. And so um, our math tricks that we can use for that, um, we can use subtraction. So uh, taking a look at what we were working with uh, during the lesson part, we can use our subtraction part. Um, to figure out if we are saying how many minutes before the hour it is, we can count back from 60 to figure out what the number of minutes into the hour we currently are. So let's go ahead and take a look at our homework problems. So we were doing number two, four, six, eight, ten on the front, and one and two on the back. So number two, I'm just going to write the time. I'm going to save a little bit of time, um, but I will explain what you could say for reading the time. So our first one, our hour hands between the 10 and 11, and our uh, minute hand is on the four, so we can do five, 10, 15, 20. That is going to give us 10, 20. One way that we can write the time is to say 20 minutes after 10, or if we wanted to do 60 minus 20, we could say that it is also five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 minutes before 11. So those are the two different ways that we could uh, write um, the way we could read the time for that. Number four, we are currently with the hour hand pretty much exactly on the 12. Um, it's just slightly to the left, but we are between 12 o'clock and one o'clock and our minute hand is on the five. So that is going to give us 12.05. And one way that we could read that time is five minutes after 12. Number six, our hour hand is between the two and the three, which means it is going to be two something. And our hour hand, or excuse me, our minute hand uh, looks like it is five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes before the hour. So we could do our 60 minus nine to get 51, or we could count all the way around by fives and ones this way. So 10 times five would give me 50. Um, and that plus one would give me 51. So one way that we could say this would be 51 minutes after two, or we could also say nine minutes before three. Um, let's go ahead and look at number eight. I'm gonna slide this up a little bit. So 18 minutes before 11, we are gonna be in the 10 o'clock time window. 18 minutes, we can do 60 minus 18. That would give us 42. So 10.42 for the time. Uh, number 10, we are going to be working in our next couple lessons with elapsed time. So a problem that works with elapsed time and we want to figure out um, what time they started, what time they finished, and how long they did something um, are usually going to start with something like this. So Pete began practicing at 25 minutes before 8, and then we might say how long he practiced for, what time did he finish? But this would be finding the first step of that uh, before we would actually use it to help us answer a problem solving question. So Pete practices at 25 minutes before eight. That means it's currently seven something. And if I do 60 minus 25, that is going to give me 35. So it would currently be 735. And as someone who is a musician, hopefully that's 7.35 p.m., not 7.35 a.m. Otherwise, you may have some grumpy parents and or uh, neighbors, uh, depending on your living situation. So number one on the back, uh, what is another way to write 13 minutes before 10? This would be writing it as the standard time. So we would be in the 9 o'clock hour and then 30, th excuse me, 13 uh, 60 minus 13 would give us 47, so 947. And number two on the back, what does the clock show? It shows that the hour hand is between uh, the two and the three, so our hour is going to be for two. And then it looks like our minute hand is right on the four, so we will have 5, 10, 15, 20 for that, and that would give us 220 for the time. So I hope this was helpful for you in figuring out what we were doing. Again, this is something that we would normally do more of around this time of the year if we were actually uh, physically at the 
the school, um, but we haven't been able to do that because of the distance learning. So hopefully everyone understands what's going on. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to post in the comments in Google Classroom, and I will be more than happy to help uh, explain for you or uh, give you additional assistance as needed. So hope you have a great weekend. Um, enjoy your Easter. I know it's going to be look a little bit different with not being able to attend church and maybe do some of the visiting things with family and friends that you might uh, do if your family does that. Um, but I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you all on Monday.